Hi, this is Linda West. I'm going to do another case comparison. Uh, I chose these cases because they're somewhat lightweight and they have wheels. I have people asking about light cases that have wheels and they're thousand dollars or less. So a little more expensive than some of my, my lower end cases that I compared. And we have three cases here. We have the, on the far left is the Eastman K1. It's a carbon fiber hybrid case. The one in the middle is a BAM Shamrock. It's actually the least expensive BAM case that's made with the high-tech uh, technology with the ABS skin over the foam core with a triple ply shell. This is the low-end BAM Classic, which is just a single wall ABS shell. And this uh, probably, I think this is the least expensive, and this is the most expensive of this trio. We're going to just do a visual comparison to show the profiles and the silhouette, and you can see how they compare side by side. It's one of the things you can't really do when you're looking at cases individually, so I like to do this. And we're going to go back here. And then we're going to um, probably, we're going to look at the flex of the back. I'm going to start over here with the BAM Classic. And it has a similar mold as the BAM 2.9 Slim with this shaped uh, back. They're trying to minimize, make it as slim as possible and minimize the material. It does have, since it is single wall, it does have some flex, but it's not too bad. Maybe an eighth of an inch. I think this contour helps make the back stiffer. And it also is convexed, so it has more space inside the case to protect the back of the cello. On the shamrock, again, we have that foam core. It's also convex. I can actually feel almost a ridge right here. And it's extremely stiff. I don't really even detect any flex whatsoever with this case. Now we have the K1. It's a flat back. And it has about the same amount of flex as the first classic. It's not too not too much. It's pretty stiff, but it is it is flat. So we're gonna look at the stability. Starting with the shamrock. I think the wheels kick it forward a little bit. You can get the shamrock with or without wheels. And of course no wheels would be a little lighter. Now we're going to go to the classic. It feels pretty good. It wants to fall forward, if anything. It's not a real stable case, especially open. I think this one feels the most stable standing up. The K1. We're going to look at what they how they behave open. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lashes. It has a similar, the same as the uh, K3. It has the limit strap and a single wall, but it's, it feels pretty stable for what it is. I've talked about leaving cello standing up in the case. I don't I don't think it's a great idea, but people want to do it, so I cover this topic. One, two, three, four, five. So we have five latches, which is typical of all the high techs. Limit strap at the top. 
not at all, hardly any flex at all standing and really stable, open. So this is a stable case when it's open, probably more so than the K1. Bam Classic, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they have a lot of latches because of the single wall ABS shell. See how really floppy. One that's not latched, it's all over the place. And this is the kind of case that you have to use all the latches or the shell will distort and it won't ever close properly ever again. This is not a case that is easy to use open and standing. I recommend that people lay it down to put their cello in it and take it out of it. It's a little safer. You can do it, but you can kind of see how kind of... It's good protection when it's closed and latched, but I wouldn't leave my cello standing in it open and closed. Um, you could... It does give protection. A little tricky closing, but not too bad. You have to... I always grab them by the neck and lift and get them to seat that way. That's how I do a lot of my cases. It seems to work. Do the top and then do near the handle. So we wanted to go over the weight because that's always a big one. Got my scale. We're going to do pounds. I'm going to zero it out. So the BAM Classic is, with wheels, is 12 pounds. My scale says 12.1, but we'll call it 12. Um, so it's just about a pound heavier than the Z-Tech. The Eastman Z Tech, which has wheels. Oops, let's get this latched. Okay, this is the Shamrock with wheels. It comes without wheels. So does the um, Classic, it also comes without wheels. One says it's 10.6 pounds, so it's about 10.5 pounds, a little lighter than the Z Tech. It's relatively light, I mean, it feels pretty light and really, really sturdy. This is good protection, I, I feel that's really good protection, and it's not, you know, a tank. <clears throat> This is the K1. Does not have a no wheel option. They only come with wheels now. They used to, once upon a time, have either wheels or no wheels. But everybody seems to want wheels, so that's what they're providing. So this is probably the lightest case that has wheels here. So this one tips the scale at 9.6 pounds. So pretty light and it has wheels so it'd be comfortable in the back carrying it around now we're going to go through all the hardware on each case and sort of compare the designs uh, this has the typical latch draw latch that Eastman uses it has the vinyl valance for the edging, which is pretty weatherproof. It does have a leather handle. Uh, the leather looks like they've beefed it up a bit from the original design, so that's good because these were wearing out, but you still have leather and stitching, and so there is a potential um, 
wear out issue with a handle. If you use the handle a lot, you might have to one day replace it. But these loops, they actually sell handles with buckles on them that you could easily retrofit on your own if you wanted. And Eastman does provide replacement parts, so you have choices. It's a pretty minimal, low-tech pull handle. It's webbing with a little rubber grip, and that's for, for wheeling. It keeps it lighter weight. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have. The D-rings with two rivets. Uh, wheels that are have uh, machine screws, so they're replaceable. They do provide parts for those. And a couple rubber stops. And it comes with the typical shoulder straps that Eastman provides, the same design as all the other cases. Now we've got the Shamrock. It has the typical BAM latch, this draw latch, which it can have some failure, but BAM will provide um, replacement parts, and they're fairly easy to replace if you have a rivet gun, which a lot of people don't have and are a little mystified by that. It has a hinged spring-loaded pull handle. You wouldn't want to lift your case without it. It would definitely break, but it's fine for wheeling your case. The D-rings are attached actually with a bigger surface area, which is good. It distributes the load better and it has four rivets. The back of this case is a textured black ABS shell, and then the front is a, a sort of a satin smooth finish. It has the typical high-tech BAM handle. It's a rubber with a plastic and a metal ends. It's kind of hinged. The wheels look like they're riveted on with just two rivets. And this feels like plastic. It's not like a urethane. That's a K1 has a urethane wheel. This one looks like it could need to get replaced. It's plastic. One day it'll wear out, I'm sure. The hinges are nice and wide. Helps with the stability. So, I think it's got a lot of things going for it. I would like to look at the interior of all these cases in a minute, but we're going to go through all the exterior hardware right now. So the BAM Classic has the same design latches. And we talked about that. Springs sometimes let go. I've replaced them. It's easy to replace. The same design as the Shamrock for the pull handle. Um, none of the cases here, except for this one, has the shoulder handle for lifting. Um, it's not leather. It's a plastic. I can tell. It just sort of looks like fake leather. Genuine simulated leather. Same with the carrying handle. Interesting that I think the uh, Shamrock wheels are lighter weight, and that's why they used them. These are urethane wheels, so these are kind of nice wheels. The same mounting system. It's actually on a has a rubber cushion between the mounting system and the case, which might help absorb vibration and shock. And so does the Shamrock. So we're going to pop this open. One of the nice things about this inexpensive BAM is the, um, the interior. It's pretty nice. I know it's a kind of a flimsy case, but once it's shut, it's real sturdy, and ABS is a really strong material. So we're going to come up at the top with a loop. This is an adjustable scroll loop, and um, it's a typical webbing clip for adjustment. There's a pad behind the scroll here. It has the neck strap, adjustable neck strap that's a clip and I'm putting these in the Musilia cases now at people's request get rid of the velcro and um, no neck block but it, it looks like the neck would come close to seating on the case itself and let's see we do have a shaped uh, pad here 
doesn't feel like it's velcroed. It seems like it's glued in, so you can't re you can't relocate it like you can the slim. It does have an interior music pocket, which a lot of people like, and it's uh, kind of a mesh material, and it doesn't look removable. I may be wrong, but I don't want to force it. It seems like it's stuck on there permanently. So, but you can't store your music in there. And there's a there's a pad here. There's padding all the way around the edge, and then it has the same padding at the bottom with a cushion on behind, with a elastic end pin loop for heavy travel. So it's got a pretty cushy uh, interior, well well organized. You have the uh, accessory pocket here instead of sideways in the C belt, which I like. You have, uh, I'm going down the bottom here, <clears throat> the typical cushion that leans up against, closes up against the tailpiece, holding your cello from shifting and moving forward. Two bow holders, an enclosed pocket on the bottom, and a Velcro top that's sewn shut at the top so the bow doesn't bounce out. We can go over to the center one and look at that one, maybe better. So this is a good bow design, bow holder design. I like that. Hinges are protected so they don't scratch your instrument. And a good weatherproof seal all the way around. So for an economical case, it's relatively light, has wheels, is pretty durable. Its only fallback is its flimsiness when it's open. And some people are okay with just working with that. Now we have the shamrock. I'm actually getting ready to set this case up and ship it out with a Felder backpack system. So this guy's going to travel in New York and go on the subways and stuff with it. It'll be good protection. So we have similar layout to the other BAM cases. We have a loop, scr a scroll loop, adjustable webbing, strap that limits the hinge adjustable clip for the neck. This pocket is more similar to the 3.5 compact. The whole interior is sort of a fuzzy velour and there's padding just in the wide parts of the cello. No padding in between, just the material. It's pretty well finished inside. A uh, pretty closed cell foam uh, end pin block support, elastic end pin loop. I think the differences could be down in the lid here. We do have a upright pouch in the scroll area. You can't stuff them too full; or they do hit your scroll. We have. Um, the same bow holder that's closed, Velcro and closed. Well, you know, this one's a little more open on the top. It's sort of closed at the top. It doesn't, it's not sewn quite as far down. And then this cushion here is interesting. It doesn't seem like it's going to hit the tailpiece. It's more like going to just push up against the cello body itself. It's a fairly wide case. I've gotten um, smaller size Montagnanas in here. Not the real big biggies, but I've gotten a wider cello in these cases. So they got some room. If you have a really big uh, cello, you'd want to go with a BAM 4.4. Here is the um, K1. I did a lot of hardware on the K3 and the K4, and this is pretty much the same hardware as the other cases. Same latches, and 
and uh, and the interior is the same. That stuff. We have uh, at the top we have an elastic scroll loop. We have the accessory pouch over here where the back of the scroll is. So you can't really stuff it without it kind of pushing against the cello. But you can put some things in there. There's actually a hygrometer here. I don't know how accurate these things are. They're Velcroed in. They'll tell you what the humidity is inside your case. We have a neck block on this case, which the BAM doesn't use. And there's controversy. There's a different opinions about whether, whether they should have neck blocks or not. It has a fairly generous supply of Velcro. They do wear out, but the Velcro on the Eastman cases seem to last pretty long, pretty long. And you can change them. We have a shaped uh, upper block cushion that shapes around the neck. Uh, button and then this holds the cello away from the back of the case. We have cushions in the wide part of the cello. And then your lower support is pretty close to where the end pin block is. Maybe not as much end pin block support as the BAM, but I think it's close enough and distributes the load enough to be safe. These hold the cello away from the back of the case because you don't want the impact to transfer from the case to the cello. It has a little metal plate at the bottom so the end pin doesn't dig a hole into your case. It's kind of a velour interior. There's a little bit of a smell but it, it, it uh, airs out pretty quick. We have a closed pouch here at the bottom and an open velcro loop so I've seen bows bounce out of these and, and there's ways to prevent that if you glue a little block of foam above the, the bow it can't bounce out of this pocket. Going down to the bottom there's just a cushion here that that will support against the tailpiece to prevent your cello from slipping forward while you're carrying it. It's pretty minimal and it's uh, strong and it's stable and under a thousand dollars and you get you get wheels so it's not a bad case and I think that's it I hope that helps